who decided that like high school was apparently the best four years of your life. I don't know who says that. Ever since I finished high school, life's been getting way better. If someone said it was the most awkward four years, I would totally be on board with that. I remember back in high school, my buddy Jimmy, uh, by the way, shout out to Jimmy if he ever sees this video, because I haven't seen him in a hot second. But he was my boy back in high school, and there was a weekend where his parents like went out of town for whatever reason, and he was like, well, you know what I gotta do now? throw a party. And by throw a party, I mean literally he just had me and like a couple other girls over. It was like five of us and it consisted of me, Jimmy, Jimmy had a girlfriend, so Jimmy's girlfriend, Jimmy's girlfriend's friend, and he also invited his female cousin. Prior to this party even happening, him and I both had like some sort of rough idea of what we were trying to make happen. See, Jimmy's cool, he'll try and wingman me to get with his cousin. If you ever seen my video about my second kiss, yeah, my other friend, not like that at all. But yeah, so the party's starting, you know, we're all there, we're listening to music, we're hanging hanging out, we're drinking uh, Four Locos. This is like back in the day when they had like the original Four Locos, not the one that's out today. Shout out to you if you know what I'm talking about. But this is like my first time ever meeting Jimmy's cousin in person and it was really cool, it was nice. We were just like, we we're hanging out, we we're talking, we we're getting along. We actually didn't hate each other by talking, it was nice. Cause sometimes you meet people and it's like their face is like yes, but then when they open their mouth it's just like no. But yeah, all in all it was like a really fun time. And then at some point throughout the evening, one of us, I don't know who it was, but someone suggested that we watch a movie. He literally decided to watch a movie on Netflix. Now this is when Netflix was like a, like more like new, but we were the original Netflix and chill. And looking back, it was like so obvious what we were trying to do. Cause it's like, you got this setup where it's like, you got a TV, you got a couch with like Jimmy, Jimmy's girlfriend, Jimmy's girlfriend's friend, which by the way, Jimmy's girlfriend's friend, whose name I forget. I feel so bad for you because you were so sweet and like you didn't have anyone that evening so I'm so sorry. But you have those three on the couch and you have me and Jimmy's cousin on the ground and it's just like, you know what's gonna happen. And this one poor girl just had to sit there and just like pretend to actually enjoy the movie Dude Where's My Car or whatever movie we watched while the other four of us were not engaged in the movie whatsoever. I swear to God we took like 20 minutes to figure out what movie we wanted to watch just like to be the background music while we were not, while we were doing other stuff. And so I'll skip over the details of what happened after the movie started but basically me and her got along really well. So, you know, after the movie's over, eventually we all, like, fell asleep. Yes, it was a sleepover. It was adorable. And side note, I just want to let you know, yes, we did, like, keep our pants on, all right? I know, I know you damn kids these days with the Netflix and chill, completely different meaning. So, yeah, we didn't do anything crazy like that, but... There was mad cuddles, and you know what? When I was when I was that age, I was all for that. So I wake up the next morning, you know, I go to the bathroom, I look at myself in the mirror, and it looks like a horse kicked me in the neck. Seriously, the mark on my neck was like from here to here. It was so big, I swear to God, you could like land a plane on it. And I start freaking out because I have like 10 minutes before my mom's gonna pick me up. Fun fact, my mom is like one floor below me right now, so she can probably hear this whole story. But anyway, I have like 10 minutes before my mom has to pick me up, so I'm freaking out. Jimmy knows like every trick in the book for getting rid of a hickey, so he like gets a cold spoon and like starts putting that on my neck. Didn't work, by the way. They do work, they don't work for me. So I'm freaking out because not only is my mom picking me up, but she's also driving home all three of the girls that were at the party. Now luckily the mark was on this side of my neck, so it's like when my mom picked me up, she'd be in like the driver's seat right here. I'm like right here, so it's like I could kind of just like, you know, maybe she won't see it. Just do one of like these the whole car ride, you know, pretend I have like a kink in my neck or something. But I said to play it cool, that's all I had to do, and just like pretend nothing was going on. So eventually my mom gets there, we all get in the car, and I'm sitting in the front, and I'm just looking dead straight ahead the entire ride. I'm not even saying anything. Mom's in the car, she's getting along with all three of the girls in the back. My mom, my mom can get along with like anyone too. So they're all chit-chatting, they're all having a good time. I'm not contributing to the conversation at all. And I think that's what gave it away because my mom like knows that I don't shut up. So the fact that I wasn't saying anything, that made her suspicious. And on top of that, the fact that I was looking directly ahead. My, see, my mom, she's just really smart with like anything about like, like how people work. But honestly, I thought I was playing it cool. I thought I was getting away with it. Until the last girl got out of the car because as soon as the last person got out of the car, my mom parks the car and you know, she looks at me, she turns her whole body, looks at me, and goes, you know, those girls are really nice. Now mind you, it does not matter what she said. What matters is her body language, because she's like this, and turns her whole body like this. And if you understand body language at all, when someone looks at you and faces you, you're supposed to, you know, reciprocate. But considering it looked like someone hit me with a bat on my neck, there was no way I was turning and looking at her like this, nah. -uh. And at this point, I'm not sure if my mom took a shot in the dark or if she got a glimpse of it or whatever, but she just looks at me and goes, 
What's on your neck? Nothing. I don't even know what you're talking about. What's sh sh shut up? And she goes, look at me. Look at me. Right turn your body. Look at me right now. And so I turn and I face her and she sees the damage that was done. And I didn't know how she was going to react. I wasn't sure if she was going to be like mad or something like that. Because she goes, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to be honest with me, okay? Was it the girl sitting in the back on the left? And it was the girl sitting in the back on the left. I don't know how she knew, but I was just like... Yes. And I swear to God, all my mom said after that was, good, she was the pretty one. Like, that's how cool my mom is. Like, I freaking love my mom. Yeah, that's called embarrassing story time. That was, that was an embarrassing story time video. If you enjoy embarrassing story time videos, give this video a thumbs up down below and maybe I'll do another one. And also, if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos and you don't hate my neck, feel free to subscribe because I make videos like this every single Monday. And guys, that's really all I've got to say on it. So, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next Monday. Peace.